Bladworth, Saskatchewan, an unassuming prairie village home to around 75 people. Unless you're a local, you probably don't know it exists. But in 1926, a group of friends gathered in a schoolyard to throw tin lids into four-foot targets drawn in the sand. To the best of our knowledge, this is the earliest known birthplace of disc golf as a competitive game. A hundred years later, and three hours north, more lines in the sand are being drawn. Jackfish Lake, Saskatchewan is the stunning backdrop of the annual Gold Eagle Open, a vaunted prairie showdown marking the end of summer and the beginning of the harvest season. On the shores of the lake, the beachside course offers scoring and a summer cottage atmosphere. Just up the road, the permanent Jackfish Lake course boasts championship level design, extreme elevation changes, and immaculate fairways carved around the hills overlooking the lake. This is it. This is the end of summer vacation. The end of the tournament season for most, back to work and school for many, but not without one last big hurrah. Whether you're making memories at the legendary evening social, or witnessing impossible precision and power on this demanding par 56 course draped atop Saskatchewan's signature prairie landscape, seize the moment. The eighth and final stop of the Canadian Disc Golf Tour is the Gold Eagle Open. Fireworks are guaranteed. It is the final event of the Canadian Disc Golf Tour, the 2023 Gold Eagle Open, sponsored by Latitude 64, presented to you by PDGA Canada and by the patrons of Park Pro. Couldn't do it without all of you. My name is Matt Lysak, in the booth, back by popular demand, the yeah. doctor, Jeremy Goche. Oh, back by popular demand. Oh, Matt. At Here's... least three people asked for you, or at least know who you are. Excellent. That's perfect. Yeah. Jeremy Goche. We are in Jackfish Lake, Saskatchewan for the Gold Eagle Open. It is the premier A tier event in Saskatchewan. It is the end of the summer. It is a party. And we've got some Saskatchewan locals joining us today. First from Saskatoon, Brandon Redekop. He is one of the young hotshots coming out of Saskatchewan right now. 983 rated for this tournament. He is backhand. He is forehand. He is power. He is putting. And a known Oilers fan, apparently. And a known Oilers fan. So he's A-OK -okay in my book. Chase Samuel. Another Saskatoon. Also from Saskatoon. Uh, he is a bit more of a backhand guy, but he's got all the tools as well. I would say maybe just a little inconsistent. You're going to see a couple of mistakes, but you're going to probably see some highlights because the man can throw a disc and the man can putt. Okay. Representing Bridge City Discs, Kristen Roach. He is a smooth operator out on the uh, out on the course. He's got backhand form. He is controlled and he is accurate and he's a fun guy to watch. And finally, representing the True Dope Cannabis Shop, Al Rabia. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right, Al. He's awesome, big power thrower, and he's also these Saskatchewan guys like dropping him in from Circle Two. So, oh, cool. We're gonna I've, have a fun card here. I've never seen this course before. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things about this course, this tournament. Uh, you came back raving about it, so I'm really looking forward to some of the action up here. Yeah. Hole one, it kind of looks like a nice little chip shot, 275 feet, looks like straight up hill. Straight up hill, and obviously the camera is always deceiving on these things. This is an uphill rip for all of these guys, and that green, you don't want to hit cage, you don't want to hit band, because you could be left with a 60-foot comebacker. From the, hall, from the tall grass, too, which could be... Uh, Looks like a bit of, looks like it contains more than grass in there too. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the tournament staff and organizers and volunteers did an unreal job on this course. This is a beautiful course at the best of times and they really went above and beyond this year and carved out a bunch of bigger greens, carved out a bunch of bigger fairways, made everything look just tip top shape. And Saskatchewan, you think flat prairie, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. 
But this is one of the most hilly courses that we played on this entire year. It is out at actual Jackfish Lake. It's not just a clever name. Okay. And it is rolling hills and... Oh, look at the back. Oh, that backdrop is quite gorgeous. Yeah. You're cool. looking over the lake on a lot of these holes. Oh, so cool. Yeah. And so the course designer did a, uh, an amazing job of using the geography of this place. So you're throwing up hills, you're throwing down hills, you're throwing between hills. And it is a challenging track. This is, if you're a handful under par, you had a pretty good round out here. Okay. This That's isn't, a, this is no gimme course. So this is championship layout here in effect for the Gold Eagle Open. Bit of a bomber course or just a healthy mix of everything? I would say a controlled bomber course. Okay. So you definitely need some power out here. Oh, look at that one. As you can see. Just Aldo laced. Really nicely. Ooh, slow down. By the basket. Okay. Okay. But, you know, there's trouble long. There's trouble short. There's some, I'm not going to say tunnel shots, but there's some, there's some holes where your angles are really important out there. You want discs that fade at the right time or don't fade too early, that kind of thing. Yeah. Some really nice design out there. That's a nice run by Chase. Yeah, he is. You're not going to see a lot of fear from any of these guys awesome. out here. They wanted to put on a show for the cameras. So, oh, yeah. Everybody's running stuff. Especially that handsome guy right behind him. Who is that guy? <laughs> That's one of our unpaid laborers, I think. <laughs> your, your doppelganger, I guess, eh? Yeah. Wow, right. look, at, look at the incline on this. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Beautiful birdie by Brandon there. Yeah, no kidding. This is not a gimme start to the round, as you can see by the rest of them. Everybody was sort of circle two, long putts, and Brandon was able to put it close enough that he had a relatively routine tap in here. Yeah. Uh, looks like death putt if you're going right behind the basket. Oh, yeah. And uh, treacherous rollaways. Yep. I mean, how many of us have uh, hit the band and it just settles down and all of a sudden you're, you know, what, 80 feet back? Putting for par again. That's not how you want to start a round either. And everybody's watching you from down below at Tournament Central. They can see the tee pad and they can see the basket because they're all straight downhill from it. Yeah. So everybody's watching you on this one. Oh, man. Oh, baby. Hole look at two. this. This is one of my favorite holes on the course. <laughs> par three, 471 feet. So this is one of the more bombery holes. I, I wish I could shrink myself into the drone because this is one of the prettier flyovers I've seen. Oh, yeah. You're over a, a valley and it is gnarly. And and no OB, hey? Nope. Only, wow. only the OB in your mind. Okay, yeah. Only the misery of having a scramble in the in the woods. Looks like uh, looks like the green is reachable. Looks like there's a bit of a drop in elevation. No, it looks about the same. Wow. It feels relatively flat, maybe slightly downhill. Okay. But it's going to be testing everybody's everybody's distance oh, here. Oh, Brandon going with the hyzer. You know, this hole reminds me a little bit of um, hole 18 at the co-op course in Grand Prairie. Yeah, Just, yeah. Over a giant valley. Oh, that, yeah. Good feels after that one. Yeah. Nice drive by Brandon there. He's going to have a long look at a birdie. Chase has got lots of power, and he's got a good angle on this one. Oh, look at that. It's going to fade out just a little bit too early for him, but okay, going to stay in the short stuff. Yeah, that's good. That's all you want to aim for. Wow. Sorry, I'm just in awe of this, this course. It's really, really good. I'm really sad I missed out on it. Yeah. If you live anywhere near Saskatchewan, this event really is... The peak of Canadian disc golf. Oh, I like that shot. Nice little slow turning. Just hang on. He's going oh, okay, to find the, the trees. Hill. You sort of want your mistake to be on the left when you're looking at the basket yeah. here, just because there's a few uh, fewer trees oh, uh, yeah. around the same distance. Man, Al's I'm, got a nice move on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Low and hard. Just crash it into the ground as quickly as you can yeah. from 400 feet back. <laughs> Al's got a monster arm, so okay. this is, I'm sure he wanted that disc to flip over a little bit because I think he got about pin high, but it just, uh, it didn't get over to the right enough for him. Now, this course is near the Battlefords, right? Nor this uh, is in, uh, yeah, near North Battleford. Okay. So, um, Cochin, I believe, is the closest town, and it's hour, hour and a half north of Saskatoon, north, northwest of Saskatoon. Okay. Oh, a nice little pitch around. Ooh, leaves a little bit to go. Yeah, you 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 want gimmies. <laughs> yes. On on this kind of hole. Yeah. This Stabbing like it. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That looked like kind of a half bid from Chase there. Oh yeah. That's like a nine tenths bid. Yeah. That was great. He gets a good amount of spin on his putts. He uh, he gets them out of his hand and and they've got a little bit of snap on them. 
Same with Al. Yeah. Uh, he Ooh, throws far, but he also cuts Al. far, too. Yeah. So. Brendan again, another, another uphill bid. Force management. Oh, no. Oh, that's the... The heartstrings just kind of got tugged a little bit. That could have gone for another minute or two. Yeah. Oh, no, not another one. Okay. Chris gets banded Ooh. on that one. Yeah. Solid, brave bid, though. Quick question for those in the audience. What's the worst rollaway you've had on a hill like this? Yeah. I'd how say... Let's have a contest. How many how, how many feet is your longest rollaway? Yeah. Uh, I bet you it's going to be this long. <laughs> and you can imagine how long that's going to be. That's the same size as a fish I caught last time I went oh, yeah. fishing. Yeah, that's I a, got one that was this big. That's a giant fish, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of bogeys, couple of pars, sort of what you would expect on um, 471 foot par three, but uh, these guys all want to be getting pars at least on this mm -hmm. hole. Yeah. This is, I think you'll probably see a few more birdies in, in the third and final round here we, when we come back to this course. Yeah. Uh, there's two different courses here. Okay. Uh, so we'll be seeing the beachside course in round two. Oh, cool. And this looks like a, for a hole three, oh, is that 750 feet? Oh, wow. 750 feet, big par four. So this mode area here, this is a lot more mode out for the tournament. So okay. like I mentioned, they did a ton of work on this course. That's your landing zone, your ideal landing zone. You really want to be in the short stuff because... The approach shot here on your second shot is no joke, and it is also on a green on a hill. Yeah, four, so, 400 to 500 feet is kind of what you want to be in the landing zones. It looks like you kind of have to give it a good rip to get out there. Yeah, probably 400 kind of gets you to the nice flat zone there. Okay. So all of these guys definitely have the power to get there. Ooh, it's Chase put, a, in, he put a little extra room in that one. Yeah, and then maybe a little bit oh too boy. much hyzer. Yeah. It's, I like how, I like how the fairway just drops down. So you, you see a lot of, you know, elevation upward. Now this is one of those hidden fairways that you got to hit. Yeah. You With, can, you're, most of these guys are not going to see where their discs are landing. So there was a great spotter out there tracking all these discs all day. Ooh, another um, one the trees. They had an awesome crew of spotters out at this tournament too. All the holes where you really wanted a spotter, they had a spotter. So nice. Great job to all the volunteers at uh, Gold Eagle there. Yeah. I can Brandon's just got a little bit more controlled hyzer on this one. I yeah. think he's he's probably played this. Ooh, still in the then. tall stuff. Yeah, hyzer's out a little too much. Wow. Yeah, and he's throwing over top of a... It's, it's amazing how much a little elevation change can change a disc flight. Yeah. To me, I always imagine the, the perfect disc flight over here is just a nice little slow turnover. But then as soon as it gets over that hill, anything can really happen to it. Yeah. So the, the spike hyzer is just really the safest play you can you can throw. Yeah. Chris left that one out nice and wide, and that it looked too far right, but that's kind of the angle that you'd want to be getting to the fairway on, and I think he's going to be really happy with it. Uh, yeah. Big hammer from Chase. Okay. I thought I thought it, it might have been a thumber. I didn't quite see it, yeah. but either a thumber or a hammer there. I like how there's a, a safe place in the trees. It yeah. looks like, uh, you know, you're not just buried if you're way deep. Wow, look at this. What a recovery Ooh, shot by shot. Al there. Okay. Yeah, that's not a second fairway, by the way. Yeah. That's a walking path. <laughs> and those guys were both just about exactly on the walking path. Crazy. Brandon did not make a bad enough mistake, so he is just forced to go up and he, over. He almost looked like he was there. going for a bit of a forehand roller, like when he landing on the ground. Yeah, maybe looking for a bit of bonus distance there. And Chris Roach has the best approach of all of them, but he hangs it out wide. He's not going to be thrilled about that. I think no. he's out of the trees, but yeah. that had birdie written all over it, it for the it, guy. It really did. I've been going for nice little approach. Is he going to dunk it? Oh, what a shot. What a great shot. Yeah. Controlling a hyzer over the, you know, a valley like this, or just, you know, controlling a nice sort of a spike hyzer approach is... A great shot to have in the bag. Yeah. Especially if you can almost go point and point and shoot. Yeah. I really like that approach from Chase there. Maybe not quite as overstable, so you're avoiding, you know, really skipping and rolling. Mm hmm Big bid from Al. Yeah. Good bid, and it's going to leave him with enough of a comebacker that would probably feel comfortable with that. Oh, boy. Oh, no. And after the best drive of the bunch, Chris is fighting, struggling on the rest for of that. Yeah, fighting for a par. Shots here. Yeah. 
Al recovers with his bogey. From where he was on the walking path, that's not too bad. And a really nice par from Chase there. Yeah, no kidding. Good recovery. Come on, Chris. Yeah, nice putt. Does clean it up after a couple of sketchy, yeah. sketchy shots there. No harm, no foul. How was the uh, wind this weekend? Was it overall pretty smooth? I would say it was uh, gusty. Yeah. It was, you're up on these hills, so there's weird, you know, ground effects happening. Mm -hmm. um, depends on what part of the hill you're on. The traditional Boom. montage of drives here. Boom. Only on Park Pro. Slam. <laughs> they got some power. Yeah. They got some power. Oh, let's look at this check-in. Yeah. So Noah Higgins, Kyle Weens, and Adam Weninger are at two down through four and seven holes respectively and we've got a few more clayton josh nate and matthew erickson all at one down jason brandon who we're watching right now still at even riley douglas former saskatchewan 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 saskatchewan, saskatchewan, saskatchewan guy turncoat <laughs> moved to alberta also at even par we got him so things are still early in the round here. Things are still pretty congested here. Every birdie is going to count for a lot out here. Ooh, hole, hole four, four, par three, 358. This one is definitely uphill as well. This is a super funky hole. There's this patch of trees protecting the basket. And this is a hard green to get to. You've got to go way over top with a big, um, you know, big Annie flex, or you got to really trust a giant forehand. I'm not sure we're going to see a, a big forehand over top of the left here, but this requires a really precise shot, a, a knowledge of your discs, and you are throwing up, and angle control is the key because you can let it hang up way too high and get in trouble, yeah. or you can Annie off like Chase and find the trees. At least he's, at least he's on the edge, I'm assuming, or is that on the bad side of the trees? Good side? Bad side? We'll find out. Okay. Oh, yeah. So the, the big anti-flex is kind of the play, but I think the wind was probably pushing them left to right on this okay. one because that yeah. both of those flipped over and, and just nosedived oh. a lot more than those guys yeah. were expecting. Brandon looks like he's got himself a bit of a bid. I mean, yeah, I think he got, yeah, I think he got to the right edge of the Just on the least. edge, yeah. Chris There's puts some, a good move on this good. one. good. This might not it's quite gonna fade have back. Legs. Yeah, it's fading. Oh, nom 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 nom. <laughs> the green monster. Anyone call it? Anybody ever call this a sporting thing a green monster? I think uh, we should no, just I think you you came up with that. I think we should your nickname own? it right now. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. it really does that. This is definitely the green monster. It's like the, the green cookie monster. Yeah, cookie cookie. Al makes the good mistake of having it a little too high and losing some distance. So he is. Yeah. Just pitch behind over. the green monster. He's yeah. not inside the monster, at least. Nice little skip up shot. Chase. Yeah, keeping it low. Yeah. Probably wanted a bit of a skip towards the basket there, but kept it safe on the dance floor. Yeah. Now Al is tall, but <laughs> the big not green sure monster is enough to make this shot. <laughs> hey, he's over. That's okay. That's that's fine. Where is he? Where is he going? And I we think, never saw Chris again. I, just, I guess he's a, a person eater too. Yeah. Big reach back. Actually manages to get, get a little it. Roll. Rolls to the basket. Oh no! Sit down now. Yeah, that's a nice shot from there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, Brandon's got a bit of distance, but from the basket, that's a nice chip up. He is just solid. He is that, uh, I don't want to say he's young, because I don't, I don't think he's that young, but he's that younger generation that grew up understanding that having a forehand and a backhand mm -hmm. and uh, a good step putt from 50 feet are all very useful tools, and you can tell he's practiced every aspect of his game. Wow, great putt by Al. Yeah, really nice putt by Al. No pressure on Chris to follow it up. Definitely not. Oh no! Oh and no! Is he? Is Chris going to win the the? How far did your bad roll away go? Well, yeah. If you said uh, forty five feet is your worst roll away, then uh, Chris and Roach, I believe, will beat you on that one. Yep. Nice try on the comeback. 
Oh, it's so disheartening. Rough luck. Yeah. After no playing kidding. a really nice pitch out over top of those trees. Too. Oh, yeah. Beautiful nice putt. putt by Brandon. Do you think he wore that Oilers hat because he knew he was on coverage and you guys were from Edmonton? Well, I know Andre is a Vancouver Canucks fan. Oh, so maybe he's doing it to push Andre a little bit. Maybe he knows that I'm the one who decides exactly how much time he spends on camera. <laughs> so, you know, maybe, maybe not. Great hat, otherwise. Yeah. Chase has got a really cool form. He's got a really deliberate walk-up, and I kind of want to steal it mm. because it, it's a little bit like um, uh, Gibson, Drew Gibson, it, where he's not like running up to the tee pad, but he's got a really nice deliberate. Very compact Yeah, is what it seems like. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Five. Downhill again this time. This whole area, the lighter uh, brush there that you can see cleared out, that was all long grass before the tournament. So oh, nice. you can see they really did a ton of work here. Yeah. It makes it a little bit easier on the landing, I think, for pace of play. They didn't want people looking around in the long bush. But um, it doesn't make the hole any easier because it's 390 downhill. And if you want to get close to this basket, you are risking going into the trees and not having any kind of putt. Yeah. Is this also? Oh, no. You can see the basket from the tee. Yeah, you can barely see the basket on this one. There's a ton of oh, blind geez. baskets. Hopefully he has a pitch around anyway. He's going to have a, a, a lengthy putt from there. Right. What I like about this course so far is that um, if you want to play a nice safe shot to the middle of a fairway, safe shot, you have the avenue to do that. So it's the, the fairway is nice and forgiving on, on the sides. I mean, I could be completely wrong, um, but it looks like it's wide enough that if you just kind of... You just kind of watch your line just straight up and you don't go for anything. You could easily just pitch out or have a couple of nice shots up to the basket. But if you really want to go for it, that's where the challenge is. Like this one in particular, if you really want to go for it, you're risking going into some deep trees. Yeah. There's a lot of, you get to decide if you want to be aggressive on these holes. And yeah. Being close to par is going to be okay. Yeah. Um, but all of these guys know that if they want to be competitive, they're going to have to be risking it on more holes. And that was... Really nicely managed by Chris Roach there. Yeah. He, uh, close enough to the basket. He's probably going to have a few trees in the way, but he gave himself a chance of birdie. Yeah. And those who disagree with me about uh, just an easy par for each hole, just, uh, you know, just make fun of me in the comments because guaranteed I probably wouldn't be able to hit even par in this course. Wow. Really nice run there. Uh, I would say that was a bid. I would call that a bid. Oh. Oh, yeah, Chase has got a look. Yeah, he's got a big looping hyzer look. Okay. Those are the best ones. Oh, yes. <laughs> Woohoo. What? That was amazing. Hot. That was so good. Oh, that hung out there forever. Yeah. He had a bit of a slow start to this round, and that's going to that's gonna hopefully kickstart him. That, that had, was a monster putt. That kind of had that, you know, when Philo Brathwaite uh, albatross that hole, yeah. and the last little bit when it curved around the trees, that's the flight pattern that it took. Definitely. It looks so good. That was the only way that disc was going in, and he absolutely nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nice birdie from Brandon, too. No kidding. You got a couple of guys under par now. Al, after running it, makes the comebacker. Deep in the forest. Good putt. And the closest of all of them. Wow. Only really one tree to deal with. Really nice birdie. So no kidding. Maybe a few camera jitters, a couple of bad rollaways, but the boys are rolling now. We're going to watch this thing of beauty again. Nose up, floating hyzer, boom, dunks it. Whew. That's a happy looking man, right? That there. is a very happy looking man. So hole six, where are we going? 234. Okay. And where is the basket? downhill. Oh, that's cool. So there is a okay. Canadian flag sitting on top of the basket. So you, if you have a peek over the top of the ledge there, you can see it. But this is totally blind oh, from the tee box. Yeah, I didn't even see it until now. So that's advantage cool. to those of you that have practiced the course. But um, good luck to those of you that have practiced this mm -hmm. course. <laughs> 234, but it, again, plays way downhill. So uh, picking a line, picking an angle, and uh, we'll probably see a lot of people trying to spike it in just to manage that angle control. Definitely looks like the kind of hole if you can keep, if you can throw it level with the ground and it starts to bail down, you can get a nice little, little skid into the green. 
Yeah. But I didn't even see those little bushes in front. Again, clever course design. Yeah. Very clever course design. Really nice use of the geography. I think this is the most common thing is trying to spike it in. Yeah. Even then, a little bit high. And you've got those deep. aspen trees in there, I'm guessing. I think they're aspen trees. Yeah. I don't remember what Chris said there. I'm sure it was hilarious. We were both laughing. <laughs> and that's a beautiful shot. Jeez, he's on a roll with those. Yeah, if he got a little bit more luck with the tree kicks, that's that's probably what he's doing nine times out of ten. He's just so controlled. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that oh no! Is probably not what Al does every time no. out on this course. No. You look, you could tell he was looking skyward for it. Yeah. And then just a casual flick. To nice up, ten twelve feet. Yeah. Then it's always those ones where you're like, "Well, why didn't I just do that like the first time?" Hate me because I say that every time I throw that. Because it wouldn't be fun anyway, man. Yeah. It wouldn't be fun either way. I think this is probably one of those holes that you play it, and this is one of the ones that you tell stories about afterward. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this time on six, I I, I tried the forehand oh. and I went into the forest. What's Brandon doing? He is uh, getting Andre to move. I'm not saying he he told Andre film it from here because I'm gonna make this, but he did want to make sure oh, we got it framed up nicely. Man, no and kidding, it didn't quite work. But Just that one works. Nice casual dunk. Yeah, really smooth with the throws. I think this is kind of common. Like, if you're a smooth thrower, you're a smooth putter a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And Chris Roach is, is real smooth. Good par save after chunking it to the top of the hill. Yeah. By Al. Take it, walk away. Next hole, you'll get it next round. Or the next time he's out. Chris is going to get one on the card here. He and Al are at one over. we still got two guys at one under. I'm curious what the field is doing at this point, because it still was, it was quite a tight field. He likes it. He knows yep. it. Yep. I think he knew that he gave it a bit of an ace run. <laughs> Just that easy. Jeez. That's a, that's a, that's a testy putt from back there. <laughs> yep. Well, check in. Noah's still in the lead. Minus three. Matt Erickson, minus three. So we got two at the top. And we've got Austin, Kyle, and Adam, minus two. And then a whole bunch of people at minus one. Yeah. Yeah, Super Austin tight. Boga coming in from Manitoba, trying to steal the glory from these Saskatchewan guys. And uh, Riley Douglas and Josh Smith from Alberta, also trying to... Yeah, it's a prairie showdown. Yeah. I like the flyover for that one. Harvest time. Yeah. We had to get, even though the course isn't on flat prairie land, we had to get a little bit of flat prairie. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, so then we're going back seven. uphill for hole seven. Okay. 352 feet uphill, probably plays 380, maybe 390. Basket tucked around. So if you've got like a 400 foot forehand Jeez. hyzer, you're licking your lips on this one. Oh. A lot of these guys are going to be playing something really, really flippy and putting it on a big swinging iron hyzer and hoping it doesn't bail out to the left. Or those trees on the way up to the top. Or That's the all I kept thinking the was the yeah. they were... Again, really good design. Yeah. And there is a bailout section, and I think Chris put a little bit too much giddy up on that anheuser. Yeah. Right but, idea. And if it had panned back out, he would have had a putt probably, but... Smart play, though. He's got a nice, nice direct shot at the basket. Probably not exactly where he wanted to place it, but. It's a little bit more common. Just float something out to the left and have the Anheuser carry it over to the right. And and destroy the camera guy. And destroy the camera guy. Simon is our uh, stand-in camera operator for this one. Simon, uh, thank you so much. He filled in on relatively short notice and helped us out. We'll mention him again. We'll uh, shout him out. He is a, oh, a disc golf tourist of sorts. Go, 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 Brandon. Push that's, it. That's the kind of line that you want. It's amazing. What a shot. He Oop. makes it over that last little wow. group of saplings there, and he's going to have a look at birdie. Wow, what a shot. What's Al going to do? Al's going big. Oh, yeah. this looks good, too. Keep drifting. If that stays over. Keep, oh, it's fighting it. That's great. Yeah. That's that's pin high. All the power in the world just didn't uh, stay straight long enough. But yeah. He'll have a putt from there. So, what, a 40-footer for, for birdie? Something like that, yeah. Long look for Chris here. That's going to be yep. just fine. 
I'm not going to be giving up too many strokes with a par on this one. No. This is not the most birdied hole. I love this backdrop. Yep. Oh, oh I thought that was going in. <laughs> he wanted to go back to back on the bombs for sure. Yep. Al's oh, Al's. Caged out. All right. Brandon's got Brandon. the best Brandon. look probably here. Floaty bid. Drive. He's a little bit closer to circle's edge than it looked on yeah. the drive there, so tough putts for everybody. But like I said, par is not a bad score on this hole. Yeah, no shame in a par on hole seven here. 352. That is a bonus birdie. <laughs> Everybody's cleaning up their pars. And then a little musical interlude here from Al. Check this out. Little at the car wash action with the disc. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hopefully his uh, disc slapping his leg doesn't get us a copyright strike. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, maybe they'll come on the podcast yeah. at the drive-in. <laughs> maybe they're... Uh, I don't think that's who does that song. Yeah, maybe they do. <laughs> this has been another edition of Jeremy Doesn't Know What He's Talking About. <laughs> Pull eight. So we go back down the hill. This is a theme on this course. You go up a hill, you go down a hill. Yeah. Uh, hole eight is a par three, 356 obviously plays less than that because it is significantly downhill. And this basket is protected oh, nice. by <clears throat> spruces in the front, spruces in the back, nasty bushes all around the basket. This hole is all about placement. And I mean, the ideal spot is directly under the basket. Yeah. The next most ideal spot is probably bailing out high left yeah. in that mode off section there, because it's about the only way that you're going to know what you're putting at so you're below the basket looks like uh -oh, chris doesn't chris quite go? get it all the way across yeah. he's gonna be short right so he's gonna have to go over some bushes on that one even if you're high left do you even have it looks like you have a you've got a downhill semi-blind look from high left yeah like you've got to be you've got to be pretty much you know level with the pin for a, a good look yeah but i think that's exactly what we're gonna see from chase here so he's oh, wow. pin high but you can see there's a lot of bushes between him and the basket so he's going to have to get a little bit creative, maybe float something over top of the bushes. Assuming Brandon's going to go up and over as well. This looks like the right angle. Might not be spiking enough. Oh, no. he's going to go it's left. It's going to be a little bit high and left for him. Oh, oh, oh that's... He rolls down into the bushes. Okay, okay. That might be enough just to drop it in. Okay. He's on the dance floor. If the if the dance floors you attend have uh, uh, giant bushes in them. As a fallout boy says... Dance, dance, dance on the floor, you know. <laughs> this has been another edition of Jerry Does Not Know Song Lyrics. <laughs> You've traveled in the car with me. All right. The up oh, and nice, over nice Chris. bit, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Al's got... Oh, wow. wow. He maybe had the best angle of all of them. We'll see where Brandon ends up, obviously, if he rolled through the, the long stuff. Oof. He's going to have the best look, but... Yeah, I kind of like where. Okay, so Brand. Okay, he's like almost within reach, and he's tall enough. Oh, geez. get it! Oh, a nice putt. try. And is it going to roll? Out, gets a bit of a roll. That should be fine. Yeah. Really cool hole. Really oh, tough miss for Chase there. Really rewards pinpoint mm -hmm. accuracy. If you can drop your hyzers like lawn darts exactly where you want them to be, this is your kind of hole. And otherwise, you're having to get creative with the putter. Jaily trees. Yeah. Just jaily trees back there. It, this whole course feels like somebody got tired of hearing all the stereotypes about Saskatchewan. <laughs> Said, yeah, you know what? We got hills. We got trees. We got, we got shrubbery. Yeah. We got all those things. And you're going to have to fight through every single one of them if you want to play this course. Come play disc golf. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. And it's a fun time. Yeah, see? Chris is having a good time. Al survives the putt. <laughs> well, he's getting attacked. Doesn't quite survive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Shakes it off. I'm cool. I made the putt. Don't worry. It's not on video, Al. <laughs> and right. then hole nine. This Big is bomber a, downhill. This is a beautiful hole, yeah. 469 feet. Looks like straight downhill. I'm guessing. Oh, there it is. Straight ahead. 
Nice big fairway, nice big bomber, kind of licking your chops, try to get it as far as you can. But you probably don't want to put it a little, you won't, probably don't want to put it too far left. Exactly right. Because then if, if you want, no, left, Matt. You don't want to put it too far left. Yeah, exactly right. Left, no, right. left. No, that's one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you don't want to put it on the left side of the fairway. Yes. Uh, you're we're straight now. What? Yeah. Oh, right? man. Uh, I yeah, give up. This is, you, you can launch a disc and yes. it feels good. Yes, and there you go. There's nothing better than launching a disc from the top of a hill. And then as that disc flies through the air, your stomach can jump up <laughs> into your throat because you realize you're hysering out into the trees. Yeah. Or you get to watch the perfect flight of a disc and you feel like a million bucks. Yep. Looks like the wind has picked up a little bit, I guess, but okay. probably expect that with these bigger open shots. Oh, look at this. Oh, what a shot. Now, is that out of bounds on the left-hand side of those no. out of bounds stakes or are they just... There's very huh. minimal, if any, OB on this course. Cool. It's your... You being uh, inaccurate is your own fault and you <laughs> deal with the consequences. Oh, Brandon is starting to flex out a little to the right. Yeah, he turned that one over a little bit more than he wanted to, I think. Coming back, though. Long into the trees. Okay. Should have a recovery shot available to him. Yeah. We'll see what the footing is like. Okay. I, uh, I like how close the basket is to the tree. It really does add that that little bit of difficulty to it. Yeah, big open green on the one side. Come on, flip over. And this nothing. looks good. Oh, it was holding. Oh, no. This is that stomach turning thing. Yeah, he's going to have to get a little creative with the hyzer to get back to the that one. Yeah. Al's got all the power in the world to drop this one on the green. So I think he just missed his line on that one. Oh, this looks good. I like this. I like this line oh, a lot. Oh, I like this. Really overstable destroyer here from Chase. Do it. And what a he puts it even closer shot. than Kristen. <laughs> what a shot. Yeah, I think he thinks it's okay. Uh, oh, what a shot. You got a Paul Macbeth hat, but he throws destroyers. What does this guy think it is? 2017? Come on, Chase. Get with the times. Hey, there's always hope. He's he's still got a few years left in him. Yeah. Hands up if you think he's coming back to Innova. Yeah. Oh, hot take alert. Hot take alert. Macbeth to Innova in 2030 or whatever his yeah. contract is up. Yeah. Nice upshot by Brandon. Al's going to have the same sort of look. Yeah, looks good. Put it close enough here. Could be. Oh, it's a bit of a tester. A tester. Tough approach from, from where these guys were. Brandon they both have to testers. Clean up a little bit. Nice putt. What a putt. Yep. Good clean up. Brandon's pretty comfortable from that range. Must be nice. Yeah. But you got to be if you want to be a top pro. Those are, especially on camera with the nerves. Yep. Those are the kind of putts and really nice birdie from Chris there. And there's a lot of really good putters in the field. It's, uh, it, it could, it could make or break it for you this weekend. Oh yeah. That's what it looks like. Oh, Al. That could have gone in. Oh, tough luck. You know, I'm not it saying you should send a letter to the manager. Dear manager, <laughs> whole nine basket, move one inch to the right, please. Oh. Chase misses weak side. You don't expect those ones to go in. Al's putt, maybe you expect to go in a little bit more. That's a that's a birdie opportunity lost for Chase. And yep. He's going to have nightmares for the rest of his life. He's going to have thousands of dollars of therapy fees. Now he's going to shake it off. He'll be, he'll be good, yeah. I'm assuming there's going to be another bomber hole coming up. Oh, look at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice touch. <laughs> So in between the holes, they go and help out with harvest in? Is that yeah, that's right. Yeah, idea? they ride the combines. Cool. So Noah Higgins is off to the hot start here. Four down through 10. Chasing uh, him is Austin and Kyle Ween's big friendly at three down. Uh, they're a little bit ahead of him on the course. Matthew Eriks and another local. He is two down through 12. We've got Brandon, Nate Donauer, Sean Olson all at one down. And we've got Chase and Kristen here on our feature card, even through nine. And Riley Douglas still kicking around. Wow. He's through 10 and he's even par as well. So any of these guys, plus probably another half dozen guys, could show up here on the on the second round. We'll see how it goes in the back nine. Yeah, I'm excited to watch the back nine. It, uh, this course is just keeps giving more and more presents. There's some awesome holes on the back nine. So stick around. Thanks for watching. Check out the Patreon if you want to be the coolest person in the world. Oh, uh, yeah. Be on the back nine. <laughs>